Raghunath, are you ready for this? What? The wisdom of the sages' trainings that are going on. Where? At the Eco Village, the, the Govardhan Eco Village in India. Why? To totally transform your life spiritually. Who? Who? You, me, Radha Swami's gonna be there, other great teachers are gonna be there, lots of cool people. How? You go to wisdomofthesages.com slash events. You find all the information there. Hadi Bo. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Live from Hastinapur a.k.a. Delhi, India. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to India. We made it. Woo! And look at Mara in her new Indian outfit. <laughs> <laughs> she just blushed. Um, we're excited here. I'm here live, live with Jujitsu Nath, a.k.a. Mukunda, and Lev. And um, we're the first ones in. And I think Linda, Linda, Linda shows up tonight. And uh, Eileen Barbero from California, I think she's probably sleeping, is here now. And then everybody shows up tomorrow in full force. Let me tell you something, Kostuba. Yeah. I may not, I may not be able to levitate or make things appear in my hands, but, but I have the mystic power of sleeping on 15. I slept like a log. Mara was sitting next to me. On the yeah, flight. Raghu woke up and said, oh, man, I just had the best sleep. I feel so refreshed. Good morning. And How I does he like, do that on never said that on an airplane before. No. The lady, even the, the, the uh, flight attendant was like leaving bags of Haldi Rams on my chest, like, like <laughs> chips. On my chest. I was so out like a log. And then I woke up. I was like, I'm ready to like jog and work out. Oh, Feeling yeah. great. Slept like nine hours straight. Eight. And we had a great flight. We did. We chanted Jagannath Ostikum. We had this like little powwow on the plane where we got together, chanted Jagannath Ostikum in English and Sanskrit. We chanted the Gunga Stotram in English and Sanskrit. You're getting ready. We did a Man Manasa Puja. We did, uh, uh, what else? We, we, we read for, uh, read the book of, yeah, Sri Shetra Parikram book yeah. about Jagannath Puri. And me and Mara are practicing Hindi. We we're practicing Hindi. We had a great, what a great, it was Chana Chapa. It was a great flight, wasn't it? Now, Mara, tell me something. How much was Roganath trying to use his Hindi walking around today? And how did that go? Yeah, he used a little bit. He got some good Hindi. Hindi ba ba toilet, kitar hai. <laughs> toilet, kitar hai. <laughs> the problem is when they respond in Hindi, and then we don't understand. That was really no, 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 big mistake. I only know. <laughs> I did get recognized twice. Look at you. A, one, there was, like, for there was shelter, one very good looking today Indian or for guy, wisdom of the sages. One very zipped up, good looking Indian guy on the like sitting next to us in the airport uh, in, in JFK. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, power talking some business thing. And I was like, and I was actually looking at him like, yeah. who is this like very like impressive looking Indian gentleman? And then so I went away and I called you. Mm -hmm. And then I came back and the guy just stands up and he goes, Ragunath, you are Ragunath. You, I have. Yes, you are Ragunath. I, said, you are Ragunath. I was like, yes, I am. He goes, I saw you on Joe Rogan just three days ago and came on my feed, and then we just talked about the oh, Bhagavad Gita the entire now, was time. Was he Indian, like from India? Was he an American? No, he's been living in America for twenty years, but he was in. You know, he's probably like I don't know, forty something, but like one of those guys was just dressed so nicely. Like even if you give me those clothes, I could never look as nice as he even did. When he got off the plane, even when he got off the plane, he still looked like completely sharp and put together. No, man. What is the matter? Why can't I just zip it up? <laughs> um, but anyway, um, anyway, that was one. And then then we went to the mall because Mara needed some clothes. <laughs> and um, somebody recognized me in the mall. No, hold said, it. This is the guy. Hold, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. That was it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I was going to sure. say, this is the guy that's always speaking against fame, but you sound so thrilled, Roganath. 
Well, it's just interesting. Okay. Come on, that's interesting. It is. Interesting. Hey, wh- whatever karma you got, you use it you in use Christian it. service. You use it. That's right. Whatever karma you got, that's what you got. It's just some karma, and then just use it. For, well, Joe Rogan Christian. thing was a big one. You know, you ought to walk around wearing that three thousand dollar denim jacket that you wore on that show just so that people <laughs> oh, that was it. good because <laughs> tuba's referring to i was wearing an old denim jacket that i got at salvation army by the way okay and um so, so when, like when that first came out because joe rogan has just such a wide plethora of people that listen to him e- extremes on either sides and people down the middle normal people my, my relatives of mine listen to joe rogan there's so many people who write on that message board of the YouTube, his YouTube channel, just like either nice things or like the rudest, cruelest thing. So after that Joe Rogan thing, there were so many really, it was like so hurtful to read it. We got both. Just like we got a lot of, yeah, there was like, people really who's this it. spiritual guy with this $3,000 Levi's jacket. I was like, Oh, they don't really understand who I am. <laughs> <laughs> they don't sort of get my lack of even caring that much, but so far, so good. We're excited good. to be in Delaware. Happy to show. Very safe, safe happy. and sound. Ready yeah, to go. We'll have, we're gonna have a little evening program. Good. And we're gonna go to bed. Little and I think I'm gonna be go. perfectly um, jet lag free. All right. All right. Did I miss anything special? Announcements. Announcements, Mara. Uh, Speaking to the mic, please. We have back to recovery group meeting today at one p.m. Tomorrow's our Q&A day, so if you have questions, you can write to us at wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. Um, and Kastuba, you're going to John V. Harrison's concert tonight? That's tonight. Yeah. So cool. A Harry a Krishna's night event. out. <laughs> yeah. It's like what a, it's like a Harry Krishna party. It's like when you want to like impress your friends and go, let's go out, do something fancy. You got yeah. you can wear you can dress up fancy, Kastuba. I don't think I'll dress. Put on a nice kurta, uh, some chowdidar pants. So there's ones that are t- baggy in the me, butt and right? tight around the knees. That's not Dude, me. Come on, dress up for Krishna. <laughs> oh, Raghunath. Krishna just accepts me as I am. You know, I don't have he to. Doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. He no. doesn't. He wants you to dress up for him. Okay. Anyway, that's good. Anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be really nice. It's going to see a lot of... Old friends there, have beautiful kirtan. Radha Swami will be there. Kaylee's going to be there. Ooh. Kaylee, Kaylee Lalita? No, Kaylee the musician. Oh, your your man crush. <laughs> That's right. I was just setting you up for that. Go have fun. No, no have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoy this. All right, so. Let's go to our nugget. It's still it's what day is it today? Friday. Um, it's Friday. So we're still on death week here. All right. Where we're taking nugget. We'll see our uh, house coming. Uh, Scranton Davies coming tonight. Scranton Davies coming. Well, all right. Yeah. It's exciting. Are you is Gita going your wife? Oh, yeah, she's coming. Gita's going too. OK. All right. OK. Okay, so here it is. Got a death um, this is from Edward Young. Who's Edward Young, Kostuba? Edward Young is a Who's poet. Edward Young? He's a poet. Oh, how could... How He's could... Poet. Okay. All right. But fate ordains the You got to read this real slow because this is, <laughs> this is like it's just a real okay. short one. You got to get a little bit more but, dramatic. But fate ordains that dearest friends must part. Boom. Um, you know, this has been my meditation this whole year. Oh, I'm serious. Cause right, because a friend did. It's been it's, it's my meditation. Uh, you know, uh, it's been uh, the the whole Gopal Chandra thing, leaving his body. Who was a student friend slash teacher at the end of his life. It was it was really just like, oh, I I get this. Everything that we read is true. All these stories, all these fantastic stories about the Bhagavatam and this, it's all true. All this stuff is real. Like you can have a best friend, a bosom friend, and they leave. Mm. You know what this reminds me of? Tell me. There's a great book. I had Mara read this book, I think. It's called Nine Lives. Ever read that book? You've talked about that in the show before, yeah. It's a good book. And and, and the first, you, you guys should get this book. Um, What's William his name? Dar- William Darlimp. Um, 
but it's he it, it usually writes historical fiction, but he writes these nine stories of people he meets in his journeys. And one of them he meets was a young, like 20 something year old, beautiful, ascetic woman. Yeah, I'm going to paraphrase and I'm going to probably get it wrong, but here is the gist of it. He's he's hiking in the Himalayas. He's seeing this young, sort of attractive, ascetic woman. He's thinking, what would lead an ascetic? What would lead a, an attractive woman to be an ascetic at a young age, like giving up everything like a monk she? hiking? I don't know. She's like early 20s. Okay. And so we had this conversation with her and she started explaining and he started saying, well, you know, did you have a family? Were you abandoned? He said, no. She said, no, no, no. I had a she was a she was a Jane, which is a type of Vedic religion. Yeah. So she said, no, I had a loving family. And, um, you know, but, you know, we had a family guru. And you hear truth from a young age. And so I started running away from home because I realized that the world was temporary. It's interesting, right, to have a family guru. I mean, I think like a lot of the family gurus in India, sometimes they're not like so qualified, which I guess is always. But 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 just the thought, right, that the whole family has this person that they respect. That's like their family priest. That's, you know? that's yeah, yes. living a deep spiritual life and, and can share with them, you know, enrich their like lives. A, family therapist or something so <laughs> so but but when some you know when you hear these absolute statements from the bhagavatam some people they ring so true with that they're like yeah the world so what was is the temporary. statement basically what? you know her her idea was you know i i, I it's the statement we say every day that What's everything's that? temporary in, in this world and there are paths to enjoy your material life and evolve we get that okay. also but yeah. there, and some most people will do that. But, but some people at a young age have a very, very loud calling slash tapping on the shoulder of God that this mm -hmm. world is a mirage. So she just kept on saying from 14 or so, she kept on running away from home and joining her guru and wanting to live in the ashram. And the parents were frustrated. The guru keeps sending her back. And finally, the parents were just like, I don't know what to do anymore. I mean, she can stay with you. She was like 18 or 19. And then she became the disciple of the guru and, and lived at the ashram. She said she had doting parents and uncles and she was the youngest and the, and the, you know, the cherished daughter. And then um, she had a best friend in the ashram also. And this best friend was like also young and also very spiritual. And then her best friend, I can't, I can't remember how she died. Maybe it was cancer or something like that, but died quickly. And at that point, she took full sannyas, like gave up the world forever. And in that tradition, um, they do it in a way where they pluck every hair out of your hair, head with a tweezers. That could take forever. Yeah, I know. Why not just shave it? But the point and it's painful. But anyway, the, the, the story was like at that moment, I realized that no one in this world is my possession. Even the person I love the most, we must part and be attached to nothing except God. Mm. And it was just like, we get that. We're supposed to be cultivating that internally as nice. we go on with the fun of life. And as we get older or closer to death, hopefully that's really resonates with re with, with our lifestyle. Like we can always go, you know what? Time to turn this off. Time to turn God on. But sometimes people get a loud calling from childhood. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, I need a serious spiritual life. And this person did it. And I remember I had to stop reading this. There's there, there are nine short stories. I had to stop reading it because part of it really resonated with me as a devotee of Krishna. You had right? to stop reading it. What, what didn't it? Feel... I had to stop reading it because part of it resonated with me as a devotee of Krishna. Yeah. Like, this is great. I need to hear this stuff. But then I have a young daughter also at the time when I read it and I was thinking, what if my daughter just picked up and left? Would I be happy for her or would I be sad for me? Uh. Like a lot of times in a person's focused spiritual life, we become sad because they may leave us behind, but it's actually the best thing that can happen to them. Common theme. You know? Yeah, it happens. You don't hear any buzzing, do you? We don't hear the background. Right, relax. It sounds like someone is uh, <laughs> like trying to chisel into a you know, a safe at a bank or something next door. But anyway, I'm glad you don't hear it. Yeah. What's your realizations? What's your takeaway from this? Um, I, I love what you're saying. It's it's like the, the wise person lets go voluntarily of what time is going to come and take involuntarily. 
right? In other words, before time comes and takes it against your will, with your own free will, you let go, right? Right. That that's the, the wise person is doing this, and and that may be externally or maybe just internally. Like in other words, you may be living with family and loved ones and friends, but you still in a certain. It's not that you let go, like in the sense that you don't show them attention or care or love, but you let go in the sense that you realize, like you're saying, they're not mine. And that, and, and as the nugget says, faith ordains that even the best of friends must part. When you think about that, you meditate on that idea. If you go deep into that, into that nugget, you should feel a sense of loneliness. You know, it's like, oh, even the best of friends, you know, even, even right. those people that are dearest to me, I don't think about this regularly. I don't, my mind doesn't go there to contemplate this, but all of them will be gone. Mm. Okay. So then if that's the case, then what am I, what are my thoughts about that? Or how am I living, you know, in a, in a way to address that reality, you know? Mm. And you know what we're going to hear about today, Ragnar? Uh, no, I don't. The, the king's dying. He's getting ripped out of his body. Oh, yeah. But it's going to be, but there's a little hint here, a little foreshadowing. You know, again, I, I always wish that <clears throat> we could read these books in Sanskrit and really were knowledgeable about all the subtleties in the poetry of the Bhagavatam. You know, yeah. but there's like, there's a foreshadowing here where there's going to be a mention of that his real misfortune isn't that he's being ripped out of the body. But his misfortune is he's forgetting that he has one friend that doesn't go away. There's one friend that fate doesn't ordain that you part with, right? So you really have to get to, if one can get to know that friend, that inner friend, right? If one can really get to know that friend, then that can, that, that, um, that relieves one from the fear of death, from the fear of separation, from the fear of loneliness, from, from all of that. And he mm. didn't have that, but Bhagavatam is encouraging us to have that. It's a foreshadowing of what will come some verses later, I guess we'll get to next week, when um, he takes birth as a woman, and then is... his, his, her husband dies, and then he gets that special visitation from that friend, from the Paramatma, from God within the heart. This is our practice. This is what sadhana is. This is what hearing and chanting is about. This is what reading Leela is all about. This is what going to Kirtan is about. This is what's going on. Pilgrimage is about. How can this supreme being become my bosom friend, become my lover, become my child? Because how can we fall in love with this being? You know what I mean? While I go on with this life. Mm. And then when everything gets ripped away from me, or just maybe we're just like a little lonely right now. And I'm looking for a crutch and a human. Very oftentimes I look for a human crutch to fulfill my God-shaped hole. Hmm. And it sort of puts, <laughs> it, uh, puts uh, uh, what are you laughing at? Just mixing metaphors, but it's like someone sticking a, a crutch into a, a <laughs> it's okay, keep going. <laughs> but, um, but the idea is like, it's, it's a great practice. Matter of fact, great practice, good little um, homework is next time you feel lonely, Instead of reaching out to anybody else or texting someone, yeah. just go to Krishna. Mm, go within. Just say yeah. some prayer. Go to Krishna right there. Yeah. Say, Krishna, I understand that this is normal, that you're my friend there. You're actually with me right now. Let me understand the value of just being with myself and you. Here's the takeaway. Here's the takeaway, Raghuna. Hit me. Hit me. What about like for the next week? Because, I, you know, I think even us bhakti yogis, we, we can become weak. It, you know, it, there's there's a whole internal life that's supposed to be going on. All right. I, we, we may I've got thought, one for you. No friend Friday. How about no friend Friday? <laughs> Don't talk to anybody. Don't How be friendly to anybody. Just inner get, friend stay Friday. inside. No friends it, on Friday. It, inner friend Friday. Inner, inner friend, friend Friday. Friday. I like inner. no friend Friday sort of. <laughs> I think I no friend inter friend. No friend Friday. <laughs> just insult Tell all your friend. friends break every friendship that you have <laughs> um no but but inner friend friday or let's say inner friend week spend a week where every day you set aside some time to have that inner conversation to speak to go God for a walk heart. with krishna yeah. date krishna <laughs> hold hands with krishna I'm having dinner with you tonight, Krishna. Make a love connection. Separate plate across from you. 
<laughs> and then feed yourself feed the, by feeding yourself you can be, here this one's for you <laughs> no but seriously that's a common you know do you remember years ago when we first started getting into bhakti you know sasvarup maharaj who was you know one of the earliest disciples of Srila Prabhupada and, and a prolific writer he wrote a book called what was it called the inner Oh God, I wish I could remember it. The inner life, something. Oh yeah, life. yeah, 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 yeah. The inner life of prayer. The inner life of prayer. The inner life of prayer, which was kind of like, um, at that time, it felt like um, sort of revolutionary. It was a little revolutionary. It was bringing in a little bit of that kind of like Christian contemplation into right. um, the. the, the I, Harry not, Krishna not exclusively, but not yeah, it's not <laughs> right. exclusively Christian contemplation, but I think he was inspired by that. Yeah. But 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 certainly something very consistent, something very parallel with the idea of having that inner life, having that inner conversation, having that inner prayer. The, if we're actually advancing in bhakti, that conversation is going on all the time. It's not like if we love God, we're we're connected to God within the heart, we're talking to God all the time, we're hearing from God all the time within the heart. Rather than just like running around with this mind just full of you know the gerbil wheel just spinning around with all the shallow thoughts that that normally occupy our mind so that that's something that you cultivate with um with a certain conviction and and regulating it helps you know like okay let me spend a little time every day let me begin maybe when i wake up when i go to sleep you know let me have a little conversation here let, let's let's go through you know our day and share our thoughts and open up our heart start the conversation Right there, there's the takeaway today. Start the conversation with God in the heart, you know? Mm. Inner Friend Friday. Inner Friend Friday. I like it. All right. <sighs> but it is Friday. It is, right? Today is Friday. Tell a friend <laughs> Friday. Today we, today we dedicate Friday to telling friends about the podcast. What if they just tell the inner friend? Is that not good you know, enough? Today you got to tell a friend. <laughs> right? Inner friend already knows friend about the tell podcast. A friend, <laughs> encourage a friend to get into the podcast. It, we're going to spread this podcast in a very, very organic way. Mm. Um, and it, that's how it's happening. People just saying, yeah, somebody told me about this. Tell a I got totally into it. I listened to it every day. Just like the guy, guy I met in the airport. He just heard it in a, like an organic way. And I tell you, everybody listening right now, you should understand that even if you don't know that much, you know something. And, 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 and you have people in your universe that look up to you. And if you share with what you're going through and your thoughts and your depth, like you reach so many people, so many people are inspired by you on your path. Um, and, and sometimes it triggers something that's already in them anyway. Just like this guy heard me on Joe Rogan. And then he just started go. I don't even think he's like a quote spiritual guy. I think he's wrapped up in his business world, but I tell you, after we had that conversation, he just kept on running into me. Hey, Raghunath, even on the plane, he was like, do you have a copy of the Bhagavad Gita right now? I want to read the Bhagavad Gita. You know, and, and, and he started quoting all these shlokas. You could tell. Right. His, I said, your father must have really trained you in shlokas. And he goes, actually, it was my grandfather. Mm. This was yeah, great. Yeah, the grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Because okay. that, that's the point, right? They're retired and they're just sharing what they've got, you know? And that's Yeah, with their grandchildren. How beautiful. Yeah. Anyway. We, the tell a friend Friday, bring touch a person on their spiritual path. And you're going to be surprised at how it's going to affect them. Mm -hmm. You know, the, we were, we were talking yesterday, M Mara brought this up too, because sometimes we take certain people for granted, um, you know, cause they don't seem like a big, very wise preacher or de has great depth of stuff, but they, tr they do something a little. And we were talking about that person that used to come to the temple on a regular basis. And, for years and he was the first one that told Prabhupada, hey maybe you should come downtown right what was his name again Prabhu? say that again oh oh uh no robert nelson robert nelson. Not, robert nelson yeah and he was a cool guy and it's because of him and his little contribution we're probably here today we're in delhi today because he told the swami to come downtown there you go <laughs> it all goes back there Okay. All right. Is it okay that Mara knits during the show? I was I picking that up. It seems like when, when she lands in India, she starts to knit. Because I remember, I've never seen her knit outside of India. Well, I'm just wondering if it's like, are you concentrating if you're knitting? Can She's you making something for you, Rogana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Okay. All right. If you're making me something, if making it something for me, good. continue. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's dive into this sweet honey jar of the Shrima Bhagavatam. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Datojayam Madhiriyat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Yutama Shloke Bhakti Rabhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurun Mithitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto their lotus feet. Here we go. Mara, hit it. Reading from Canto 4, Chapter 28, Text 23. Studying the Srimad Bhagavatam, Text 23. When the Yavanas were taking King Paranjana away to their place, binding him like an animal, the king's followers became greatly aggrieved. While they lamented, they were forced to go along with him. Mm. So the followers this, are his life air, the prana, right? All his desires that are still there. You know, the mind and, and the prana go with you to the next body. Mm. So it's like all the this, desires that he has are going with him too, you know? Yeah, like sometimes we say, you know, my child, my young child really loves horses, really loves the outdoors, really loves art, really loves... That's because that has been a practice that has been traveling with this child, mm. perhaps for lifetimes. They've been cultivating it. Uh, and the, plus, there's some children that really are attracted to you or sort of like repulsed by you or whatever. We, we get attached to a group of people and we travel with that group with a similar desire, a similar attachments. And that subtle body stays with the soul as it enters into the new uh, incarnation of ourself. And um, if you're new to this story that we're telling, this is all an analogy about a person leaving his body. Okay, text 24. The serpent, right, who is the, the prime life heirs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. who, had who had already been arrested by the soldiers of Yavana Raj and was out of the city, began to follow his master along with the others. To the as days soon as they and the left, nights, right? The time right? and all that they're pulling them out. As soon as they all left the city, it was immediately dismantled and smashed to dust. There's your body. Mm -hmm. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It, right? You burn the body, it just becomes ashes. Yeah. Seth Prabhupada writes, It is a foolish person who engages in improving the condition of the city without caring for the citizens or inhabitants. Right. Similarly, right? Similarly, a living entity who is not properly enlightened in spiritual knowledge simply takes care of the external body not knowing that the spirit soul is the principal factor within the sure. body it's like if you're if you're into organic food and local vegetables because you want to take care of your body it, it can merely be just like a big ego trip for you who cares who cares if you're all organic you're about to die man it's great to be organic i like organic vegetables but the fact is this body is temporary. There is no like super longevity diet that's going to save your life. It might give you a few more years or add a little a little bit more um, life to your life. But the fact is, the body's temporary. You can't beat that system. You can't freeze yourself like a goldfish and stay out living forever. You, you know, and then they're going to wind you back up. The body's temporary. The spirit's eternal, and so um, it doesn't matter uh, what type of uh, uh, deal you got going with Whole Foods Market and what type of uh, superfoods you're taking. If we just get lost up in this, lost in this concept of uh, longevity and health I'm gonna, and, and working out, or, or being obsessed with our, our physical or yoga just... practice or Ayurveda, our Panchakarma cleanses, it's all great. But there's a reason why we're healthy. It's to maintain a body so we can become 
spiritual to understand we're not the body. If I'm doing all these yoga poses, but the goal of yoga is to understand you're not a body, but I'm obsessed with my flexible body and can wrap my legs around my head and then bind. Who cares? Well, what if someone says this, Raghunath, that you guys are proposing things here, but you can't prove them? Well, Bhagavad Gita says different. Okay, so you got your doctrine. You got your doctrine. There's so many of them out there. Yeah, it's a philosophy. Like, you have your philosophy. You have your philosophy that there's nothing. I have a philosophy that there's something. uh, Yeah, in a sense, that's my point. So, In other words, these texts are saying something about life. It's, it's I thought we were going to banter more. I thought we were going to debate a little bit more. Well, well that's what we're doing. <laughs> you want to fight? You, you stepped, fight? You've stepped out of it now, and you're just now you're taking my side. But yes, okay, <laughs> okay, you win. Um, but, but but these texts are saying something. Now, for instance, right now we're hearing that there's a soul, right? That there's a person within the body. That the body itself is just a cage or just a vehicle. And that there's a self within the body. And if you focus only on the body and, and you're, you're ignoring this, the soul within, which Prabhupada describes as the principal factor within the body, well, then you're missing out on the point of life. Now, someone may say, well, you can't prove that. And we could say, well, that may be, right? In other words, it's not something that you're going to perceive with a microscope or, or, or something like that. But, but let's think about it. Right. Let, let's let's engage with it. This is our right. point. Right. In other words, we're not saying that here's the truth and everyone has to believe it. But we're saying here are some texts with some fascinating ideas about life. Sure. And why aren't we engaging with these ideas? Why? Why does why is not every human being offered the opportunity to engage with these ideas? Why? Why isn't that what we're getting in education well, in school? Why aren't we hearing? Well, you know, this this um this ancient tradition believed this about life and this about the body etc and, and this about god and this and here's another tradition that had other ideas some of them are similar in some ways they disagree and here's another uh civilization and then here's today what like a lot of people are saying let's talk about these ideas we don't do that right it's like it, school doesn't we don't we don't we're, we're not Actually, familiar with these ideas so much what's the uh, name of our zoomer from sweden who came to Italy with us? I just can't think of her name right now. Come on. Sophie Moberg? Sophie. Sophie said that, Sophie from Sweden, Sophie Sweden, said that a Hare Krishna kid or Hare Krishna guy came to her school when she was like in 10th grade or 9th grade. And yeah. she was like, this is the absolute truth. And totally, and she's become like, sort of like an undercover Hare Krishna ever since then. Yeah. Yeah. Which, it's one okay, of these things so like, if you presented it, <laughs> yeah. if you presented yeah. it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's something you can work with. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like, okay, well, I have desires and they say, well, yeah, you have desires, but you should understand your desires won't ultimately fulfill your heart. It's good for, even if like in the, in your teens, when your hormones are gurgling out of control, it's good to hear these things Yeah, because it'll frame it out when those desires don't actually fulfill you. But you should hear that. There is a problem with drinking and, and, and drugs. It's not going to, you should, my mom drilled that into my head from childhood. Never take drugs, never take drugs. Never. It was just like one of those things I heard in a, when you hear truth on a regular basis and then you say, well, I hear it, but I got another plan. And then you go against it then I'll, and you feel the pain of it. That's my new thing with my kids. If they want to eat junk food, I say, okay, eat the junk food, but notice how you feel afterwards, you know? And so I think it should be explained to to people. And I think there should be like dialogue about this because I really feel like we got something to offer. You know, and again, it's not like we have to say, hey, this is the truth and you have to believe it. But it's like, let's you let's take the value of human life and engage it and let us rather than letting it just sit in the garage. Right. Sure. We have the ability to consider what life is all about. Why are we just letting that sit in the garage? Let's work with, let's engage with that. You know, I remember, I think we read uh, as a nugget, like one day, a long time ago, I forget who the quote was from, but they're saying that their kid came back from school and they're like, well, what did you learn in school today? And the kid said that the teacher said that the, our mind is like a pond full of fish, right? And the fish are our feelings. 
And if we remember to to be the pond and not the fish, mm-hmm. and we just let those feelings swim, you know, th- th- like it, it was saying, like be the pond, right? In other words, understand that these feelings are just something that's swimming through you, right? And observe that. Like, and, and the person said what they thought was, what well, schools are doing a lot better nowadays than they were when I was a kid, right? Like no one would have brought that up when I was, but what, a, what an important thing to consider. And, and, and people may say, well, what's the value of this? You know, you, you're, you're, you're tying some kind of religious value to it that people might find, find salvation. Well, yeah, I do believe people might find salvation through that. But, but even beyond that, in other words, what if, you know, let, let's take the population of the United States, which is something like, what, 380 million or something like that? There's more. You know? There's more. But okay. Mary, I think it's something Mary, like that. You got these. <laughs> Mary, you're knitting away there. Google that. <laughs> it's, it's something like that. And uh, so Andrew, yeah, RMR says that's about right. So, so imagine if all of those people, all of them, had the chance to engage a bit with Vaishnavism, Buddhism, you know, Hinduism, um, you, you know, um, uh, Native American ideas about spirit, you know, like had it, had the opportunity to engage, you know, philosophically engage, you know, um, with these ideas. And that became part, like a, a natural part of what someone's meant to grow up with. Why not go there for yeah. like an intro to philosophy class? Why? We d- I didn't like, even have an intro to philosophy random class. philosophers who were just like, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And for some reason they got brought to the, the highest, uh, the pinnacle of uh, thoughtfulness. Why not go with these cultures that have deep philosophies? It's huge. And truthfully, it's already happening. I think this is already happening. Well, it didn't happen in my school. And I don't think it happens that much. You're old. You're old. Some schools will have it for sure. And your kids go to all these schools, like these, you know, Steiner schools and stuff like that. But in public schools, they're not doing this rather than that. They're not doing this. I I, I think this is, I think these are like, I think the conversation is going to change. The fact that so many people are vegans, like they're making vegan, like everything. What Big Macs now? The fact that they're even, this is even in the conversation. Yeah. Ah, What? Long way to, long way to go. Long way to go. I'm just saying things have gotten so far since you and I were in high school. Maybe. No one couldn't give a crap about a vegan Big Mac when I was in eighth grade. Okay. No one even know what a vegan was. That's that's I'm I not ha- I'm, I'm not satisfied yet. But hold on. I oh, was making on. a point. Don't you think somebody's gonna say <laughs> slow who down? Cares? Cool down, right? Cool down. No, 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 no. <laughs> I want to say so, someone's <laughs> gonna say, who cares about your stupid animals? We're all gonna die anyway. So when a vegan or a person who's into animal rights or caring about animals, yeah. they they need some substantial thing because someone say, Well, you should be compassionate. And they can say, Well, who cares about being okay? Well, this is where I'm going, Ragnar. This is where I'm going to slow down. Let's take a take a deep breath. Right? Why must we slow down? Why must <laughs> you keep the pace of the show? I say speed up. I'm saying slow <laughs> down. You're like in the Ragu. race. There's like a pace car. Are you the pace car of this show? <laughs> I'm trying to be. <laughs> Here's my point. And it's going to exactly what you're saying is that people might say, oh, you're just you have your religious ideas that are concerned with some idea of salvation. So no. I'm talking about improving the world that we live in. If 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 you took the population of the, United, of the United States and they had the idea, if they had the opportunity to engage with these ideas as they're growing up, a lot of them, for so many of them, it's going to lead them towards an idea of compassion, towards ahimsa, towards the, you, you know being kinder to one another, or the idea of karma. That you know what, even from a young age, if you if you grow up with this idea that the pain that I cause others comes back to me. It makes you thoughtful about life, you know? Sure. And, Just and, even about if I'm going through some pain, Mallory was saying something good the other day. She's like, yeah, you know, going through some pain. That's my pain. That's some karma. I'm just going to, I'm not going to try to dig into my past and figure out what I've done, but I've got some pain. That's my karma. And, and that's, a, and just that, a great that's way very to, healthy. Psychologically, that's very healthy. Psychologically right? healthy. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, what else do I have? I have resentment. live in blame and, yeah, and resentment yeah. right. and hate and bitterness. Right. It's such, here's the deal. We're not going to help you. The Vedic problems are not only going to help you with your spiritual life. It's going to solve the world's problems. There we go. So, it, so it really is. Yeah. yeah. You want to learn compassion, spiritual knowledge, compassion. right? Yeah. 
It's not spiritual bypassing. It's the opposite. It's getting to the actual roots of the problems with spiritual this world. application. Right. Spiritual application, All not the bypassing. It's drilling right into the heart of the issues. <laughs> easy, Ragnar. <right>? Easy. <laughs> What's, What's going on? Over? Why are you so angry today? What's going on? <laughs> I've been in a great mood. I you slept going really great. well on the flight. I slept great on that plane. <laughs> All right. I'm ready to wrestle jujitsu mouth right here. <laughs> I he can tell. Pillow huh? fights right after the show. So, so yeah, that, that's right. Spiritual application is not spiritual bypassing. It's spiritual application. We got so many divisions in society that are based on spiritual ignorance. I feel like the spiritual people are, knowledge. are claiming spiritual bypassing. They've never read the Srimad Bhagavatam. They've never, re you read the first canto and tell me that spiritual bypass. And, and, and live with people that are applying it. See how it can be applied, right? So yeah, apply, you know, and, and so we have problems of social divisions. We have problems of, like you're saying, psychological problems, you know, that are caused by just, ultimately there's ignorance behind it you know like a, a misunderstanding of my situation in the world a misunderstanding of what's happening and why it's happening you know it can be so healing for people mm. all right Ron, i could tell you're reading the board so why don't we read the next i'm reading one? the board a little i wanted to see what diane las vegas said she's a kinder a kindergarten teacher in in a public school in vegas and she has a picture of yashoda and krishna on her desk she plays the maha mantra when she preps she's trying excellent Excellent. But but and, and I mean I think that's wonderful that everyone but my point is these things should be built into the curriculum of the schools. And not, not saying that they're think, true. Like, I don't even that, care if they're I don't even yeah. care if they're like Krishna Bhaktas. I get it. But to understand this Vedic understanding of reality and to understand that there is higher powers, there is so I mean the world there will is change. Source. We're part of something bigger. Life is eternal. Don't let your desires own you. You're something, you know, don't treat people like commodities. See them yeah. as spiritual beings. I wish somebody told me that in junior <laughs> high school. Easy, Rogan. I wish I had an older brother <laughs> who told me that. Okay. Now you're upset with your older brother. See, that's where this is all coming from. <laughs> 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 why didn't he teach me this? And why did he call me? <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, no, I believe that the world will change. You know, the, the world will, when we, when, when we can, here's something, tell a friend Friday, right? In other words, yeah. when as a community, we can elevate, you know, we can spread our message enough that, that people get it. Hey, these are important ideas that human beings must engage with, you know, this new Christian that, that it'll change the world. That we, that's going on right now is going to change the world. Yeah. I'm, I'm really convinced of it. And it's up to everybody listening today to get serious about telling a friend on Friday. <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy. I'm serious. People have to, you have to, that's how, like in the 12 step group, that's how recovery happens. That's the final that's step a, is you got to go out and you got to support. I don't even know the 12 steps, but whatever it is, you got to, you got to bring this message to other people and help them in their recovery. That's what we're doing. That's what this podcast is about. It's fueling me to speak about this. Okay, easy, easy. By the way, I didn't even tell that that second kid that I met at the mall was from Mexico City or no, Guadalajara. Guadalajara. He's like, okay. yeah, I grew up a devotee. He looked very normal. He looked Indian, but he was Mexican. He, hold it. He walked up to you in a Starbucks in Delhi. In Delhi, in the mall. Okay. And, he said, and he said, hey, Raghunath. Hey, Raghunath. And he said, he said, we listen to your podcast in Mexico. Look at that. And I was like, oh, cool. And he said, but I also grew up listening to Shelter. Look at that. My, my band. I said, oh, really? In, in the hardcore scene? He goes, no, I grew up a devotee. He looked very normal and cool and 30 years old, maybe. He goes, no, I grew up and my parents were like strict devotees. And they only let our family listen to like, you know, Shelter. Or <laughs> like, like, like as far as outside of Bob his, fan, his, fan, his parents let him listen to uh, to you guys. Listen to Shelter. You want to you want to listen on the, to crazy you music. The Here you go. You want some crazy? You listen to Shelter. They're crazy. Okay. We're gonna get in this household. You want a good local music? Uh? No, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did I get talking about that, man? I don't know. You're, oh, because people know. engage with this from a young age, it'll change the world, etc. I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's what that's Friday. what it was. Yeah, telephone right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next verse. I could I could go for a samosa right now. 
What, where are you at today? You're angry one minute, you're, you're hungry, and you're distracted. I'm hungry, I'm hangry. <laughs> I'm hysterical. Yeah, this is a hangry show today. Raghunath gets hangry. I think that should be our title today. When King Paranjana was being dragged with a great force by the powerful Yavana, oh, out man. of his gross ignorance, he could he still could not remember his friend and well-wisher, the super soul. There you go. That's There you go. Right. Okay, he's getting dragged. You know... You remember when we had Ganesham on? He was our first interview, remember? Ganesham? Two and a half years ago. Yeah. I think Yoga Shwar was our first interview. Oh, I think. Anyway, they were Maybe close. Maybe we did. Maybe we did. Yeah, we did have him on the show really early on. You're right. Yeah, yeah. In, in any case, um, we interviewed Ganesham, who is and He's a, a pastor. Chaplain. It's not a pastor. Yeah, you call him a pastor the other day. He's a chaplain. Did I call him a, pa- I call him a pastor? You call him a pastor. But, yeah. He's a chaplain. <laughs> A chaplain, a chaplain, a Hindu chaplain. And he right. deals with people who are like terminally ill at a hospital. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and their families, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ministering their families. Yeah. And so he's shared something because we're hearing about Paranjana. The, he's being pulled out. The soul is being pulled out of the body. And you can see how it's being written about, right? It's like it's, it's saying like that, like pulled. He's getting dragged, right? And he's being dragged for judgment. And... That that's Hold you know, it. Yeah. Judgmental God. What are you talking about? Explain not God. Yourself. God doesn't do the judgment. God does. No. God's not. God's no. having his 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 uh, adventures of love. But the problem is, there's still it's it, it, it's still we still got to pay for what we've done in the material world. So that's, that's right. all it is. All it is. This whole concept of judgment. It's just a balance. It's not a judgment, so to speak. It's more of a balance. Well, yeah. And, you want to step on a coal, you're going to your be foot. cruel. It's called balance. Yeah, if you're going to be cruel to others, somebody's got to step up and judge you for that and yeah. and, and, and help you rectify that. I mean, that, I think right? judging just repels people away from spiritual thought. That's why I don't like to say it. I just call it balance. Okay. It's well, balance. Raghunath, you're good. You, I think you need to, to, to be able to handle this, to be able to accommodate. I can, I can handle There's it. There's some judgment going on. I'm just on like here. a, I'm a communicator, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to say the way people can understand it. All right. It's a balance. Well, I, I think you got to give people some. Then I'm going to gain some, some weight when I overeat. All right. right? I'm going to get right. some indigestion. Okay. It's so not it's... like some evil entity is making happening to me. It's just like, well, here's what you did. Here's what you sort of ordered. You ordered indigestion. You ordered, you know. Right. Um, so, so he's getting whatever. pulled out of the body, right? What was the main thing that this story was talking about that he was doing that was really problematic, the king? Remember? It's been a long story. It's been a long story. What? Oh, he. Oh, well, a, a couple things. First, he was dharmically trying to make. There's that. He was trying to enjoy the material world, but in a dharmic way. And then he was like, you know what? Had enough of dharma. I'm gonna just go crazy. But in and both cases, said, what was he doing? He was. He was killing someone. He's killing animals. Oh, he was killing animals. Yeah. Right. He was hunting when he was when he was morally, you know, let go. And he, but even yeah. when he was in his dharmic kind of religious enjoyment, he was sacrificing animals as some kind of religious ritual. Right. right? So now he's getting dragged out of the body. Santa. He's going to be um. He's going to be balanced for those previous activities. Right. He's going to be balanced. Okay. Going to be balanced. By, by a guy that seems like a heavy judge, but he's just balancing. Right. Balancing him. So, but but my point was speaking about Ganesham. Was you see within. Bhagavatam and in other texts they speak about this experience of people appearing to you at the moment of death, drag fearful beings that pull you out of the body, right? And drag you. And you're saying Ganesham balancing session of of stories of people dying that were not only that, you see now now Ganesham, so he's familiar with that because he's read Bhagavatam. He's a you know, but he was saying that all the other chaplains in the hospital the Christian ones, the Jewish ones, all of them. They say, oh, yeah, those stories, we know those ones, those guys. People talk about this when they have their near-death experiences, that these frightful characters come and they start to drag you from the body. And when you see it, you're you're terrified and you're shocked and you talk about it when you come back. And so, like... The stupid scare tactics to be a Hare Krishna. I'm not trying to scare anyone. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I'm not trying to scare anyone, right? I'm just saying that this goes across the board that that it, it's it's kind of like um, eyewitness accounts 
of what's being mm-hmm. spoken about in these texts. Eyewitness accounts. Right. This is eyewitness sure. news right here, right now. Yeah, it's real. Okay. But maybe, anyway, I think when we come back next week, we're going to pick up here. Uh, but we're going to hear about him getting dragged out of the body. All right. I think we should bring some of our uh, live, live people or some of our pilgrims on the show for little walk ons and tell their story. I think that's what we do next week. Instead of nuggets, how about <laughs> tell a story week? Tell your story, a little mini bios, find out how people ended up in India. What, for walk on Wednesday or just in no. general? Like in general, every day, Instead of, every day, maybe. Yeah, it's good right to talk now. about these things off the air. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about this off the air. I mean, Lev told me his story. What a story idea. that guy's got! I don't know if you want. It's a good story. Yeah, he's a great okay, guy. Mara, uh, I know you were knitting. Did you uh, manage to get any takeaways? Yes, I did. Um, speaking of things we're supposed to talk about off the air, do we have a guest lined up for Sunday? Because we, we certainly do. We have an absolutely fascinating, exciting guest to have on the show. Radhi Karaman Prabhu, a.k.a. Professor Ravi Gupta. Oh, wow. I've heard about him. He is like, the, he's the youngest. We got to get all the deets on him. He was like the youngest person ever to graduate from like um, Oxford or something like that. He learned to read and write through like Bhagavatam verses. He was like, like a homeschool. He was a genius, homeschool like, devotee kid success yeah. story. You yeah. know, uh, he, Indian descent, um, yes. grew up in America. And he's like incredible. He used to write for like Back to Godhead magazine when he was like 12, 12 or, or something, something like that. I remember I was like, who? I'd always be like, this who's kid. this kid? Who's this puffed up kid? Well, he's an Oxford professor now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's something, like, he oh, graduated from Oxford at like age he was 14. always or something smarter like than me, even at 11. But but he okay. but he's got brilliant insights into Bhagavatam and Bhakti and, and, and Jiva Goswami you know, and, and all that. So we're going to bring him on we've the show. Been tr- we've been something. trying to get him for a while, too. We got him. Got him. Good job, Kostuba. It wasn't me. It was Brej Bihari. Oh, already? Okay, Mara. So that's Sunday. Takeaways. Takeaways. Cultivate attachment to God. Boring. <laughs> well, you Short, see, you can't sweet. say that, right? I'm like, <laughs> what is and that? it's a boring takeaway, but yes, it's the absolute truth. It's not boring. That was a mean thing to say. That was that a was stupid. Mean. That was a sinful gonna, thing to say. It's going to come back. And you're going to get judged <laughs> for that and balanced out for that one, Ragnar. Listen, listen. You know what I mean? My 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 means. I mean, I like sort of like sexier, happening, more cooler takeaways. That is like the absolute truth. What was it again? Say it again. Cultivate attachment to God. Yes. Perfect. Of course, of course, we should. That is a very beautiful statement. What else? Even the deepest friendship is temporary. Ouch. Give Krishna your loneliness. <laughs> Do it. Give Krishna your loneliness, lonely boy. Cry to Krishna. Cry to Krishna. Bhagavatam offers relief from the fear and anxiety of death. Yes. Kind of long, but yes. Uh, inner friend Friday. Inner friend. Tell, talk to your inner friend this Friday. Talk to your inner friend Friday. <laughs> Send like a, a screenshot to yourself. Uh, Don't just care for the body, care for the soul. Very good. Like, you see, he did it again. It's like, it's like that's so like uh, 2010. We need some fresher. <laughs> that's takeaways. not 2010. Listen that's deeper. Listen deeper. <laughs> that's eternal wisdom. That's not 2010. What are you talking about? All right. Spiritual <laughs> knowledge and application will save the world. It will. Yes. yes. <laughs> Roganath's in it, his uh, Hollywood Roganath, Hollywood agent no, Roganath mood. <laughs> Bring me yeah, something sexier. Fired. <laughs> Engage the value of human life, and, and that was it. Engage, and, engage. Let's hear that one again. Engage the value of human life. Don't leave it sitting in the. You see, this is the point, Mary. And, I, and I'm gonna. You should have. You should have went with the like. Uh, don't leave it in the garage, right? That that that's. Remember, I was talking about that, right? We're gonna have more like that, right? Okay. Yeah. Who cares if you're all organic? You're all gonna die. Oh. Organic fertilizer. Huh? <laughs> What's with huh? you today? We're gonna huh? hangry today. I'm a little hangry for a samosa <laughs> all right. and a pakora. Thanks everybody for joining us. Wow, live for a minute. Thanks for everybody.